Five man infield, two man outfield for Pedro Severino. 2 2. In the air. That will do it. Pedro Severino, a walk off winner on a Saturday night. And the Orioles snap their losing streak at 6 5 4 and 10. This is what baseball in Boston looks like right now. It hurts. It's hard to watch. But it doesn't have to stay that way. This is the first video of a series where I'm going to try to break down all 30 teams and preview them for 2021. We'll see how far we get, but we're going to go by divisions and start with the worst in the division first, so let's get into Boston. After winning the World Series in 2018, the Red Sox dropped to third in the division in 2019, and then this year they dropped to fifth. They finished 24-36, and 36, and it was a shortened season, but I think Red Sox fans knew that this was coming after the Mookie trade. The wins above replacement leaders were Jackie Bradley Jr. and Alex Verdugo. They both had a war of 1.9. I think the biggest surprises this year were Verdugo and uh, Bobby Dahlbeck. But they are losing Jackie Bradley Jr. in the offseason. So, sad for Red Sox Nation. He's been there for seven years, I think. I'm going to try not to dwell on the losses too much because whether or not teams will re-sign people, I'm just kind of going to leave that to real life, but... The fact of the matter is they're losing JBJ, but that's the only real significant loss to free agency. Usually when a team's rebuilding, they leave it up to the farm system to try to bring them back. Boston luckily has the pockets to make a quick rebuild happen, but currently their farm system's ranked 25th. That's a real tough ranking to be at starting a rebuild, but it's a bit deceiving. Jeter Downs came over in the Mookie Betts trade. He looks like a wild card. He's been traded twice and he's played inconsistently, but I'd keep an eye on him. He has good intangibles. Jeter Downs is the top prospect in the system. He's 40th in all of the MLB. But uh, behind him, there was uh, Tanner Houck who came up in 2020. He was really good. And then Bobby Dahlbeck came up in 2020 as well. We'll talk about him a little bit later. But overall, this system is kind of in shambles right now. But it's never really been a big play for Boston. They kind of just sign people and speed up their rebuilds. It's worked for them in the past. We'll see if they do it again. They got a new GM, so... Uh, he came over from the Rays, Chime Bloom. He helped form the Rays into what they are today with their advanced analytics and shifts and everything. But he's expressed interest in wanting to spend with Boston. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend once you come over from the Rays payroll? If you're a Boston fan, you should be incredibly excited to see what these next couple years have. To talk about the current team, I want to start with Alex Verdugo. He came over from Los Angeles in the Mookie Betts trade, and Boston fans were kind of mad about it because he's not Mookie Betts, but who is Mookie Betts? I think he's a young guy with a lot of potential. He's a bit more polished than Boston fans gave him credit for. He did strike out at a higher clip than he did in 2019, but he's still getting on base at a 367 clip. Obviously, Boston didn't want to trade Mookie Betts, but when you get a 24-year-old like Alex Verdugo back, and he's already hitting an OPS plus of a 126, I think you're pretty happy with the outlook of things, especially as a rebuilding team. And I think Verdugo will be a cornerstone outfielder for years to come in Boston. I want to talk about JBJ just a little bit. I don't want to say he had a career year, but he was definitely one of the more outstanding players on this team. And he's only ever done that in the field before, really. So for him to just step up and hit like he's one of the stars on this team was probably pretty fun for Boston fans to watch. Whether or not they'll keep him and sign him in 2021, we'll see. But I think you're pretty happy with the way he went out if he doesn't come back. Then there's Bobby Dahlbeck, who came up about halfway through the 60-game season. He hit eight home runs in 23 games with a 959 OPS. He's the 100th prospect in MLB. But he came up, he looked like a big league hitter. He was flicking balls to the opposite fields pretty easily for home runs. You should be excited to watch him develop. I'm sure he'll be at first base for at least a few years now. Now that we've talked about the good things on this team, we got to talk about the bad things, and there were a few of them. The ERA plus on this team was 85. That's 29th in the league. They allowed 98 home runs. That's the most in baseball. They had a whip of 1.601 as a team. That's 30th in the league. And their walks per nine, 4.3, was 29th in the league. Only the Pittsburgh Pirates were worse. Another major weakness on this team this year was the defense. They were the worst defensive team in baseball. Uh, Rafael Devers at third base is not helping anybody. He is one of the worst fielders in baseball. He's probably the worst third baseman 
in the field in baseball. Either he needs to go DH or put JD in the field so he can be DH or maybe teach him first base, but something's got to change because Rafael Devers can't field the ground ball. Overall, this is a Boston team that hasn't really struggled like this in a few years now, and in Boston, you're not used to losing. But I don't think you should panic. Uh, Chime Bloom looks like he's going to do some really good things. Give Heim some time is what they say. There's still a really good core here of all-star potential players. Bogarts, Devers, maybe Benintendi. You still got Chris Sale. J.D. Martinez looked absolutely awful in 2020, but I think he'll bounce back. He's another great offensive piece for them in the lineup. Uh, Verdugo, as I mentioned earlier. Dahlbeck, if he continues doing what he's doing. There's nothing really wrong with the offense. It's a good offense. It's a top 10 offense. But the pitching staff really let them down this year. They were losing a lot of games and many of them by a lot more than three runs. On top of the run differential, negative 59. That's 26th in the league. This pitching staff just needs a complete overhaul. Uh, Chris Sale's the only positive piece in here. This bullpen is, besides the Phillies' historically bad season, this is probably the worst bullpen in baseball. But the way teams are run these days, bullpen arms just kind of seem to fall in their lap. Coming by starting pitching isn't so easy, though. Chris Sale will be back, but they did lose Martin Perez to free agency. He's by no means a cornerstone of the starting rotation, but he's a good contact pitcher who's probably in a good three or four on any other team. So to finish up here, it's a dire situation for a city not used to watching a rebuilding team, but deep pockets and a strong offensive core will make this process faster and less painful. Not to mention, it was only two years ago you were doing this. On down, here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series! Five to one the final tonight! And the best team in baseball wins it all in 2018!